So I look around and I find a bathroom in the corner and I set up shop and I go in and oh baby, this was perfect. This is just what I needed. And I'll let you figure it out for yourself, but in Hebrew what ended up happening was called shilshul. Mm -hmm. Very bad. And uh, number two, keep it short. Because look, I've been in that audience so many times before and all I can remember ever thinking about when someone else was talking was just, God, could you just wrap it up and get off the stage? I want to get my life off. So, so happy that I was his grandson and I made him the happiest grandfather ever. And how grateful he was to have me as part of his family. Back up everyone, thanks for gonna win and we got beat by 50. We got absolutely smoked, which led us to another 0-8 season. So our, our losing record was then 31 games in a row, which is really hard. Like after the games, there's there's not even conceivable. I couldn't even remember like what it felt like to win. Like I uh, just too Big brown beautiful flies just looking right back at me. And I'm like, oh my god, is it? And I look up even more, and it's my crush. I am so excited and scared of the city. Him off the, but the first thing he says when they take him off the ventilator is, I have a strong will to live. Um, and so these turned into some pretty special few days with my grandfather, getting to um, talk with him, to tell him about the thesis I'm working on. I really on. get used to um, seeing someone violently sees in front of you, especially when they're so close to home. Um, um, we go to dinner, dinner's going great, everyone's in a great mood, I'm sitting across from her and she's laughing at all my jokes. Um, we get out of dinner and she gets a phone call, and about 30 seconds into the phone call she starts crying. And uh, she gets up, you know, and like, but it would be great, like, I just can't wait to abscond with your children. And but like, in case you don't know, it's kind of like run away with or like make off in the middle of the night. And like saying that once is one thing, but like he says it again, right? <laughs> and then one day I'm bringing up the conversation. I'm like, oh, I know how much you want to go scoff with us. And he goes, oh, oh, the devil's in you. And uh, I'm like, yeah. it was definitely anxiety, pretty thrill. And so I was like, oh, that wasn't too bad. So I told, looked over to my friend Doug. I was like, yeah, oh, I bet you can't, you can't do this. I kind of just egged him on, messing around. So, you know, he went for it. He, Seemed like he got it pretty easily. It's, it's like the heartbeat of Nairobi. It's like throbbing and breathing. You see people walking around. A lot of people hawking, selling stuff, uh, towels, hustling passengers, people pushing trolleys. It's really loud, but then it's alive. Uh, and so I was walking around. Another half an hour passes, nothing. And by this time, I'm convinced that it's a prank. And you know? next day, I'm going to go to school, and my friends are going to be like, huh, do you feel like a plastic bag? And my best friend's gonna be like, ha, got owned. And um, a police car comes flying into the lot, just comes up this, up this little path that's coming through. I see it first and I take off. I take off left. And I guess I picked the wrong angle because I got hit by a cop car. <laughs> <laughs> so these three boys who grew up in our neighborhood and were in charge of the music and a lot of other administrative stuff at the youth group. And um, this was at a time post Jones Brothers, pre One Direction, so they filled a very important niche in the world, and they each <laughs> filled the perfect trope of a teenage heartthrob. So you had Brett and Mrs. Smiling's class one day, and it's George's turn to do show and tell. And George was pretty much the coolest kid in my class. Um, he was like good looking, he was the class clown. Um, Everyone liked You're it. allowed to come to the Boundary Waters to get your permit. You have to watch a video about what to do in these kinds of situations. They teach you about bears, but they teach you about bears when bears come to your campsite. And they say, bang your pots and pans and get as big as you can and look the bear in the eye and scare it away. <laughs> but like, what if you're walking into the bear's territory? They don't really describe what to do then. So three things. Yeah. He was just like, yeah, drive it, drive it, it's fine. I was like, 
no, it's not fine. Like, I promise you don't want me driving your car right now. And he's like, yeah, yeah, don't worry. I can't drive. Just drive. So I climb into this man's ginormous van, and it's packed with people. Like, there are at least seven people, like aunts and nieces and nephews. Everyone's just looking at me. And I don't have to talk to the mirror. I can talk to Jesus. I'll say, and that is why the sky is blue. And I'll get a round of applause and feedback, like, and it's great.